big shaman. Uh, but yeah, it's not a monolithic. I, I mean, understanding that yes, for sure, our Gentiles get into the world to come. The the notion of a righteous Gentile is not even really in the Torah. And I think in Tanakh, when it talks about a righteous Gentile, I think it's always talking about a righteous convert who just happens not to live in the land of Israel. This is what Rashi says when it says, if I have to met the gear, that you have to love a convert. He says that, no, that doesn't mean a convert. That means anyone from the outside, anyone who's a stranger. That could be someone who's in the covenant, who lives in Babylon, who travels in Israel, looks different, sounds different, right? And that's enough, you know, for people to be mistreated. When, when the early... Um, you know, Mizrahi Jews, Yemeni Jews, when they came to Israel, the Ashkenazim thought they were Arabs and they wouldn't even count them in a, in a minion, right? Because they look different, they sound different. But thank God for the internet. And it would have been nice for you and him to kind of have a little. I'm here, bro. I mean, I, I mean, for some reason, people don't want to. It's really hard for me to get people to dialogue with me anymore. I mean, like, mainly because they know. Because it seems like they they have a certain mission, and they want to stick to that mission as opposed to, like you know, like. This no, guy I think or... the reason they don't want to do it is because, in case it's a debate, and the reason I don't call my dialogues a debate is because I'm trying to bait the people in, right? Because if they know, I mean, they know they're gonna lose. They know they're gonna lose, and it's not because I'm the smartest guy in the world, but in terms of. I mean, look at Dr. Brown things. and you. That he he went his way thinking he won. You go your way thinking you won. So I don't know if that's a fair uh, argument to say that yeah, they, yeah. they think they'll lose. Yeah, I'll tell you, Michael Brown is the exception. I respect the guy. He has guts. Uh, but yeah, I think there's a reason why he doesn't have me on his show anymore. Yes, I, I respect him too. And he actually uh, debated you a couple of times, right? Yeah, four times. Yeah. It's really different debating a Jew and debating a Christian. I think that two knowledgeable people could argue themselves into a corner. That's it. I mean, he's not going to change. Also, I'm not a Christian assassin here, meaning I'm my goal. And I've told him many times is not to get him to drop Christianity. Uh, we argued about things like the oral law, Torah observance. This is what I'm passionate about. I don't really care who you think the Messiah is just because I'd have to be a hypocrite if I'm going to tolerate Lubavitchers. And I love Mishachistim. I mean, I... I think they're probably the most purposeful Jews, uh, you know, I mean, outside the Messianic camp. So Mishachistim are the Chabad Lubavitchers who believe that the Rebbe is Messiah. They're so optimistic and they're so happy and Chabad does such good in the world that I'm glad they believe the Rebbe is the Messiah. I mean, because they'd probably be, I don't know, you know, the Israelis dressed like like Italians, you know, like the art scene, the secular Jews and Ben Yehuda, whatever. Uh if that makes them a better person, if that keeps them Torah observant, then then good for them. I mean, good for them. Even if they believe the Rebbe is God, which some of them do, by the way. Oh, right, but I heard. Um, do you believe in the um, that when the year five thousand seven hundred eighty-two? No, I don't believe that. The point that there's an argument that the rabbis deliberately screwed up the calendar, at least the counting, just so people won't be able to make these predictions anymore oh really wow i never heard that before yeah yeah now i don't know if that's true but that's what i've heard i but heard rabbi mizraki say that that um he can prove scientifically the world is only 5782 years old he made a whole documentary about it oh well i mean if we had the intelligence of rabbi mizraki then <laughs> come yeah on, come on I'm, I'm not saying the did guy's you, a dumb guy you know but he makes some such claims did like, you see his documentary tour in sirens i can prove 100 percent that the, i could convince everyone anyone 100% that the to that the oral law is true and for him the oral law is not what I call the oral law he includes every midrash in there and he tries to justify it he has a certain level of hubris that it just seems comical to someone who who is not you know it just seems comical man i mean i don't want to insult any group but it's weird that the vast majority of people who follow him like our buhari <laughs> you know and